When performing a renal exam, we are going to image both the right and the left kidney in the long axis first and then the short axis. And then we're going to move to the bladder where we'll image again in the long axis as well as the short axis. To image the right kidney, we're going to find the xiphoid process and draw an imaginary line from the xiphoid process to the mid-axillary line. This is the area that we will begin with probe placement. The marker dot will be pointed towards the patient's head. When imaging the right kidney, we're going to use a curvilinear probe. And again, we're going to start off with a probe position where we find the xiphoid process and then draw an imaginary line from the xiphoid process all the way to the mid-axillary line. We're going to place our transducer in this spot with the marker dot here pointed towards the patient's head. When we image this area, we're going to tilt the transducer towards the patient's back to get a long axis image of the kidney. Moving the transducer around will help us improve our view, and we may need to tilt the transducer just a little bit so that the, the transducer is parallel to the ribs. Some other things that we can do to help our image is to have the patient take a deep breath and move the transducer accordingly. Once we've imaged the kidney in its long axis, fanning all the way through to see the parenchyma and the sinus, we will rotate the transducer 90 degrees so that the marker dot is pointed towards the patient's back. Again, we will fan the transducer back and forth so that we can see the entire kidney in its short axis. When imaging the left kidney, we do not have the advantage of a large liver to help us as a large sonographic window. Therefore, our probe placement is going to be a little bit different on the left than it was on the right. We're first going to start off by finding the xiphoid process and drawing an imaginary line all the way to the posterior axillary line. When we actually do this, our hand is going to be actually resting up on the bed and the probe is going to be pointed and angled just a little bit anterior towards the patient's abdomen. Again, the marker dot, as we start off, will be pointed towards the patient's head. When imaging the left kidney, we will again use a curvilinear transducer. We're going to start off in the long axis view. To obtain that view, we'll find the xiphoid process and draw an imaginary line all the way to the posterior axillary line. The marker dot is going to be pointed towards the patient's head. Our hand is actually going to be resting on the bed as we perform this exam. As we look to obtain the image, we will find both the spleen and the kidney. We will focus on the kidney and we may need to rotate the transducer in between the ribs to improve our view. A little gentle pressure will help spread the ribs to provide the best view possible. Once we have a nice long axis view, we'll rotate and fan the transducer so that we can see through the parenchyma into the sinus and again through the parenchyma. Once we have a nice and adequate long axis view, to obtain the short axis view, we're going to rotate the transducer 90 degrees counterclockwise and again we'll fan the transducer through the middle and up into the superior pole and then down through the superior, through the mid, and to the inferior pole. This is a complete two-view image and exam of the left kidney. To perform the exam, we will find and measure the bladder in the sagittal and transverse orientations. In the sagittal view, with the probe placed just above the pubic symphysis and the marker dot pointed towards the patient's head, you will drag the probe back and forth. Rotate the probe counterclockwise so that the marker dot is pointed towards the patient's right. Let's see a couple of examples.